design of spring a spring is defined as a elastic body or a resistant member whose primary function is to deflect or distort under the load and to recover its original shape when the load is removed important applications to cushion uh, to cushion absorb or control energy due to the shock or the vibration as in car springs railway buffers aircraft landing gears shock absorbers and vibration dampers to apply the forces as in brakes clutches spring loaded valves to control motion by maintaining the contact between the two element as in hands and followers uh, to measure the forces as in spring balance and engine indicators uh, to store energy as in watches and toys etc and uh, types of springs first is helical spring helical spring are made up of the wire coiled in the form of helix and is primarily intended to compressive or tensile load the cross section of the wire from which the spring is made may be circular square or rectangular the two forms of helical springs are compression helical spring and tension helical spring the helical spring are said to be closely coiled when the spring wire is coiled to close that the plane containing each turn is nearly at a right angles to the axis of the helix and the wire is subjected to torsion in other words in a closely coiled helical spring the helix angle is very small it is usually less than 10 to the power 0 or 10 the major uh, stresses produced in the helix spring are the shear stresses due to the twisting and the load applied is parallel or along the axis of the spring in open coiled helical springs the spring wire is coiled in such a way that there is a large gap between a two coils consecutive turns as a result of which the spring can take compression load also in other words is an open coil helical spring the helix angle is large advantages of helical spring easy to manufacture available in the wide range these are reliable they have the constant spring rate their performance can be predicted more accurately and the helical springs characteristics are varied by changing the dimensions now second one conical or volute spring the conical and volute springs are as shown in figure they are used to special application where the telescopic spring or a spring with a spring rate that increases with the load desired the conical spring is as shown and it would be a uniform pitch whereas the volute spring is have the parabolic parabolic structure with the constant pitch and lead angles the springs may be made either partially or completely telescoping in either case the number of active coils gradually decreases and the decreasing number of coils results in the increasing spring rate this characteristics is sometimes utilized in the vibration problems 
where the springs are used to support the body that has a varying mass. The major stresses produced in the conical and volute springs are shear stresses due to the twisting. Now torsion spring. These springs may be helical or a spiral type. The helical type may be used only in application where the load tends to wind up the spring and are used where the load tends to increase the number of coils when made, made of a flat strip are used in watches and clocks. The major stresses produced in the torsion spring are tensile and compression due to bending. Now laminated or the lift spring. A laminated or lift spring also known as a flat spring or a carriage spring. It consists of a number of flat plates known as a leaves, leaves of varying length held together by means of clamps and bolts. As shown in figure, these are mostly used in the automobiles. The major stresses produced in a leaf spring are tensile and compression stresses. Now disc or Belleville springs. These springs are consist of number of conical discs held together against the shipping, slipping by central boat or tube. And these springs are used in the application where high spring rate and compact spring units are required. The major stresses produced in the disc spring are the tensile and compressive stresses. No special purpose spring. In these springs are air or liquid springs, rubber springs, ring springs, etc. The fluids, that is air or fluid, can behave as a compression spring, and these springs are used for special type of applications only. Now terms used in the compression spring. Solid length. When the compression spring is compressed until the coils came in a contact with each other, then the spring is said to be a solid. And the solid length of a spring is the product of total number of coils and the diameter of the wire. So mathematically, solid length of the spring is equal to LS is equal to N dash multiplied by D where N dash is equal to total number of coils and D is a diameter of an individual wire. Now second, free length. The free length of a compression spring is the length of spring in a free or unloaded condition. This is equal to a solid length plus the maximum deflection or the compression of the spring and the clearance between the adjacent coils when fully compressed and mathematically free length of the spring that is LF is equal to solid length plus maximum compression length plus the clearance between the adjacent coils that is a clash allowance. So we get LF is equal to N dash D plus sigma max plus 0 0.15 sigma max or a del max. So following relation may also be useful to find the free length of the spring. LF is equal to N dash D plus del max plus N dash minus 1 multiplied by 1 mm. In this the clearance between the two adjacent coil is taken as 1 mm. Now spring index. The spring index is defined as the ratio of the mean diameter of the coil to the diameter of the wire. Mathematically, spring index C is equal to dm by d, where dm is the mean diameter of the coil and d is the diameter of the wire. Now spring rate. 
the spring rate or the stiffness or a spring constant is defined as the load required per unit deflection of the spring and we get the spring rate is equal to k is equal to f upon del l where f is a load and the del l is a deflection of the spring pitch the pitch of a coil is defined as the axial distance between the adjacent coils in uncompressed state mathematically the pitch of a coil is equal to p and is equal to free length upon n dash minus 1 where lf is a free length of spring lf is a solid length of spring n dash is a total number of coils and the d is a diameter of the wire in choosing a pitch for the coils the following point should be noted first thing the pitch of a coil should be such that if the spring is accidentally or carelessly compressed the stress do not increase the yield point stress in the torsion the spring should not close up before the maximum service load is reached and now end connection for the compression helical spring the end connection for compression helical springs are suitably formed in order to apply the load the various forms of end connection in which all springs the end coil produces an eccentric application of the load increasing the stress on the one side of the spring under certain condition especially when the number of coils are small this effect must be taken into account in which the plane ends ground end squared end squared and ground end the nearest approach to an axial load is secured by the squared and ground end where the end turn are squared and then ground perpendicular to the helix axis it may be noted that part of the coil which is in a contact with the seat does not contribute to spring action and hence are termed as a inactive coils the turns which impart spring action are known as the active turns as the load increases the number of inactive coils also increases due to the setting setting of a end coils and the amount of increase varies from 0.5 to 1 turn at the usual working loads now search in a spring when one end of a helical spring is resting on the rigid support and the other end is loaded suddenly then all the coils of the spring will not suddenly deflect equally because some time is required for the propagation of stresses along the spring wire the little consideration will show that in a beginning the end coil of the spring in a contact with the applied load takes the whole the deflection and when it transmits a large part of the deflection to adjacent coils in this way the wave of compression propagates through the coils to the supported <coughs> ends from where it is reflected back to the deflected end this wave of compression travels along the spring and indefinitely if the applied load is fluctuating type as in the case of a wall spring in the internal combustion engines and if the time interval between the load application is equal to the time required for the wave to travel from one end to the other end 
then resonance will occur. This results in a very large deflection of the coils and correspondingly very high stresses. Under these conditions, it is just possible that the spring may fail. This phenomena is called a surge. It has been found that natural frequency of spring should be at least 20 times the frequency of the application of a periodic load in order to avoid the resonance with all the harmonic frequencies up to the 20th, 12th order. The natural frequency of spring damped, clamped between two plates is given by Fn is equal to d upon 2 pi d square n under root 6 gg upon rho cycles per second where small d is equal to diameter of wire dm means the mean diameter of spring n is the number of active turns g is the modulus of rigidity small g is equal to acceleration due to gravity and rho is the density of the spring material and the surge in springs may be eliminated by using the following methods first by using a friction dampers on the center coils so that the wave propagation dies out by using a spring of high natural frequency by using a spring having a pitch of the coils near end different than the center to have a different natural frequencies. Now springs in series. Consider a two springs connected in a series where the F is a load carried by the springs. Del 1 is a deflection of spring 1. Del 2 is a deflection of spring 2. K1 is a stiffness of spring 1 that is F upon del 1 and the K2 is a stiffness of spring 2 that is F upon del 2. As we know that when a springs are connected in a series then the total deflection produced by the springs is equal to the sum of the deflection of the individual spring. Total deflection of the spring is equal to del is equal to del 1 plus del 2 and is equal to F upon K is equal to F1 by K1 plus F2 by K2. So K is a combined stiffness of the springs. Now the springs in parallel. Consider a two springs connected in a parallel as shown where the F is a load carried by the spring. F1 is a shared by spring 1. F2 is a load shared by spring F2. K1 is a stiffness of the spring, K2 is a stiffness of spring 2. As we know that the springs are connected in parallel then the total deflection produced by the springs is same as the deflection of the individual spring. So F is equal to F1 plus F2 where del, del K is equal to del K1 plus del K2. So K is equal to K1 plus K2. So K is the combined stiffness of the spring and the del is a deflection produced. Now design of a helical spring. In addition to the torsional shear stress tau in the wire, following stresses also act on the wire. That is a direct shear stress due to the load F and the stresses due to the curvature of the wire are considered. Now helical springs are designed on the basis of torsional shear stress where the effect of direct shear and the stress due to the curvature of wire is taken into account by the factor called the Wells factor which is given by Wells factor is equal to 4c minus 1 divided by 4c minus 4 plus in bracket 0 0.615 divided by c bracket complete where the c is a spring index and it is calculated as dm divided by small d. The helical coil spring subjected to the compressive load is uh, has 
to bear the direct shear load of F and torque T and the resultant shear stress on the spring will be tau max and is given as tau max is equal to T upon ZP plus FA so it also equals 8 multiplied by F dm divided by pi d cube plus 4f upon pi d square so for the circular wire zp is equal to pi upon 16 d cube uh, the tau max would be the 4f dm in divided by pi d cube in bracket 1 plus 0.5 d upon dm so area is term as pi by 4 d square and torque is taken as f dm by 2 so we get the f dm upon pi d cube in bracket 1 plus 0.5 divided by c and is term as k1 times the 8 multiplied by f dm upon pi d cube so the quantity 1 plus 0 0.5 divided by c is called as a shear stress multiplex and investigations reveal that the effect of curvature is highly localized on the inside of the spring hence the static loads only k1 should be considered and from table 8 1 the deflection of a helical string having the effective terms can be shown as del is equal to 8 f dm cube dot n divided by g upon d to the power 4 which is also equivalent to the 8 f n c cube upon g d so the equation for the spring rate or the stiffness uh, is denoted by Ks and Ks is taken as uh, F upon del so GD upon 8 C cube N the relation between the number of active coils and the total number of active coils on the basis of the type of spring ends that is squared, squared and ground, plain and plain and ground is taken from the 83 table number from the data book. Now properties of the string materials are given in the table 8, 9 on the page 100. If the string index is not given, take the C is equal to 6 to 10. If the free length is more than the 4 times of the mean diameter, the spring design should be checked for the buckling effect and was on the page 88 of the data book.